surprising pop in the trade gap in the month of March. It rose to $8.5 billion, up sharply from the $6 billion shortfall in February. Joining us now to analyze the latest economic data is David Andrews, an international trade expert, joining us here in our Los Angeles studios. It was indeed a rather surprising jump in the trade gap. Many players were looking for only $7.5 billion of red ink. Why do you think we're seeing such stickiness in the trade numbers around these levels? Well, I think that the trade gap is due to a large increase in manufactured exports during the month. And that shows that either business is investing a lot more than we think that they are, perhaps trying to become more efficient. And if that's the case, that's probably good news, even though the imports did rise about 10%. Now, um, with the appetite for imports still rather heavy from the American side, some players argue that a recession is needed in order to shrink the trade deficit. Uh, is that a good or bad philosophy as far as trade relations are concerned? I don't think that's a very good philosophy mm -hmm. because you may lower your imports, but you put people out of work here. I think a better way to go is to have more imports overseas so that our exports, which were a record in, in March, could grow faster. Right. How about uh, the, the trade deficit uh, just overall? So far this year, as you told me in the commercial, it's about $24 billion. It seems to be stalled around the $100 and $105 billion mark on an annual basis. Is it possible that it might just be structurally in place at, at those levels? It's, it seems to be very sticky at that level. And even though there are some improvement, if we multiply um, 24 by 4, it comes up to 96. So, so we are seeing some improvement in the trade deficit. But it isn't enough to offset the increased in interest payments that we pay on our debt mm -hmm. overseas. So let's say that last year's trade uh, deficit was $100 billion. That means interest on, if it were 10%, was $10 billion more this year than it was last year. And that offsets the, the increase in the and, and the improvement in the trade deficit. What about the value of the U.S. dollar? It's uh, been uh, flailing around against the Japanese yen, weakening most recently, but holding pretty firm against the Deutsche Mark. Do we need any further currency exchange adjustments in order to address the trade situation? Well, certainly it, against the Far Eastern currencies, we need some further improvement mm -hmm. in, in the Japanese yen. At least the, the yen needs to strengthen, the dollar needs to weaken a little bit further to have the structural change that we, we have. Now, whether or not that happens depends on how much the Japanese invest back in the United States. If they invest less, then there will be uh, a stronger move towards uh, a, a quicker uh, appreciation of the Japanese yen or depreciation of the U.S. dollar. All right. David, thanks for coming by this Okay. Morning. Well, thanks, Ron. David, uh, David Andrews, international trade expert, join, uh, joining us here in our studios in Los Angeles. Wall Street is enjoying a bit of a bounce this morning. Stock price is getting off to a fairly good start after a couple lethargic sessions. The Dow down three points in yesterday's action, failing to hit an all-time high, but is in record ground this morning now, up 11 and a third points at 2831.02, ahead of an options expiration Friday. Transportation average up three quarters of a point. Some expect the airline stocks to weaken a bit today on some gloomy industry forecasts about summer air traffic. The Dow utility average off a third of a point, while Fancy's up eight and three quarters at 2466.19. S&P 500 cash up 1.22 with the June futures up 1.65. The premium now expanding to a reading of 1.88. It is still below the levels, however, that would result in any arbitrage-related buy programs. New York Stock Exchange Index up about a half point and volume a little heavier than we saw yesterday at this time. 12 million shares changing hands. Advances beating declines 5 to 3 on the New York Stock Exchange. The up volume nearly 7 million shares. The down volume just about 2 million so far. June T-bills and bonds are holding steady with the bonds up three ticks now at 92 and 10.30 seconds. The dollar index off fractionally. The CRB index up a third of a point after a late rally yesterday, holding now at 246.12.